Welcome everyone to the big clash between two of the finest players in the world of chess. Hikaru Nakamura takes on Fabiano Caruana. Hikaru has the white pieces. This is the penultimate round at the FIDE Grand Swiss. And Hikaru opens the game with 1e4 and presses the clock. Fabiano responds with the very very solid e5. And now what is Hikaru going to do? He plays his knight out to f3. Karuana brings his knight to f6. Whoa, it's the Petrov. Will Hikaru take on e5? No, he goes for knight c3. And this is the four knights which is going to be in action. It's considered to be quite a solid opening for white. But generally, games end in draws at the highest level. Karuana takes the pawn. And now after knight takes d4, the main line continues with bishop coming out to b4 and that is exactly what Fabi does. Now the knight is pinned so the threat is to take the pawn. So Hikaru takes first on c6 and you take it back b takes c6. This has all been seen thousands of times. Bishop d3 defending the pawn here on e4 and now Karuana plays his pawn in the center d5. Hikaru chops the pawn off and Karuana now castles it out. It's quite risky to take this pawn because there is this theory with bishop g4 which is quite well known at the top level and that's the reason why Hikaru castles it out and now Fabi takes on d5 and now for white he plays his pawn to h3. This is a move that was popularized by Kramnik Earlier, the main move used to be bishop g5 and after h3, c6 has been played but Karuana's move bishop e6 is not so well known. Although Hikaru is blitzing out his moves, he is well prepared. And now pawn up to c5, even Karuana is well prepared. So this is opening theory and also Hikaru plays his next move quickly, rook d1 so that c4 cannot be played. You take the pawn and the rook is opposite the queen. But this move was played after quite some thought and Karuana takes the knight. Queen e7 has been played before but now Hikaru takes the pawn back. Notice that white has the bishop pair. Both his bishops nicely positioned. But Fabi goes queen a5 and he tells his opponent that I'm attacking this pawn. Although it's not really hanging because if you take here, you can take on h7 and take the queen. And knight e4, ooh, that's a classy move. And here, if you take, yes, that's what is done. Pawn takes, you will see that we already have opposite colored bishop positions. So after pawn takes, if Hikaru were to take queen e4, then Fabi would take this pawn and the position is drawish. That's the reason why Hikaru plays queen g3, a very smart move. He still seems like in his prep, 1 hour 42 minutes, Karuana moves his king away. The thing about opposite colored bishops is that it can be drawish but on the other hand if one side is able to attack then it can become an unstoppable attack because both bishops never meet each other. So it's like you have an extra piece in the attack. Rook e8 played by Karuana and Hikaru now thinks for a bit and brings his rook to d6. A good move taking control of the b6 square also trying to double the rooks h6 a grave error by fabi this is not at all a good move let's look at hikaru's expression you can see there maybe he does not like it but the main reason why this move is not good is because white can now double up on this pawn and sacrifice his bishop at the right moment rook e7 played by karuana he is getting uncomfortable here and now rook e1 is a strong move but hikaru goes queen e3 Again, you can see the queen and bishop line up against the h6 pawn. Rook c8 played by Fabi. And this is already a losing position. Hikaru sacks. Beautiful move. Because if you take, I take with the queen. King g8, rook e1, rook e3 to g3. And it's a devastating attack. That's the reason why Karuana plays f6. And Hikaru chops off another pawn. You can't take here. Because now rook takes e6 is hanging. So clearly... Karuana in big trouble. He takes on c3. That was his calculation. 
But can Hikaru move his rook away? Rook e1. He brings his rook to d1, which is also a nice move. And he's threatening rook d8 check. Rook e8 played by Fabi. And now he wants to move his bishop away. But Hikaru plays rook d8. Great move. Because if you play bishop f7, I can simply take the rook. This is pinned. That's the reason why Karuana plays bishop g8 to break this pin. However, now Hikaru can move his queen away. Queen h4 played. Well, very strong was queen g6. That was a very powerful move. But he goes queen h4 and Karuana takes on c2. So black is doing okay. Rook d3 played by Hikaru. But white's attack looks very strong. You can see there. Bishop h7 is played to block the checks. But now Hikaru brings his rook in. Ooh, what a move. g5 instantly played by Karuana. He's down to a minute. He still has to make 13 moves. It's going to be very difficult. And queen g3 played. You can see Hikaru has a spring in his step. He knows that he can win. Two seconds left. Queen b1. Check given. And now king h2. Look at the black king. So we can look at these four rooks. Just opposite each other. And now Karuana brings his queen back to f5. Hikaru is completely winning here. His bishop looks trapped. But actually it's a very powerful bishop. Rook takes rook. Karuana takes the other rook. And now how do you finish off the game? Queen c7. Attacking here. Also putting pressure here. And also threatening queen g7 check. So Karuana now trades the queens with queen f4. But after take... Pawn takes, you can see that the pawns are equal for the time being. But now after check, you can first take the pawn on f6. That's exactly what he does. Threatening now rook check and picking up this bishop. So bishop b1, Karuana saves his bishop. But now he's going to lose another pawn. Oh, first Hikaru being very, very precise here. Ah, he doesn't go for the a7 pawn. He can actually take on a7. But it seems like he's calculated till the end that the opposite colored bishop endgame is winning. So he takes here, king takes, and bishop to g5. The pawn is hanging, and if you lose the pawn, it's a lost position. So he goes g4, and he'll now bring his king up, and he has two passers. Also, the c pawn is a passed pawn, but it is very, very easily blocked by the bishop from queening. And now after bishop e4, he brings his bishop to d2. The bishop is coming to c3. We are reaching move number 40. Hikaru will have a lot of time. And Karuana says, I resign. Game is over. What a victory by Fabian, uh, by Hikaru Nakamura beating Fabiano Karuana. Fantastic chess there. And there you can see them analyzing. Clearly, Hikaru played better chess but it's wonderful to see Karuana analyzing and also you know after such a heartbreaking loss because this takes away his chance from finishing at the top in this tournament and with this win Hikaru makes a very very bold claim towards getting a candidate spot.